All right, guys, welcome back. We are now in the last quarter of the book, chapter 10, 11, and 12. And uh, chapter 10 is something you're definitely going to want moving in any higher level uh, of the subject. Uh, this time we're dealing with how the fields and potentials actually play together. Um, and we got a couple marquee concepts here. So uh, what we're going to do is put together a result we found from uh, Maxwell's equations and see how things are with the uh, non-time, well, with the time dependencies now built in. We know that the curl of the magnetic vector potential gives us the magnetic field, but then we also saw that, uh, I think in chapter 7, that the time derivative of the magnetic vector potential coupled or also gave us an electric field due to the induced field. So we need to put that together uh, with the gradient of the scalar potential to find the total electric field. So we're going to start there and then uh, build a theory of potentials and fields forward. So with that, our first question is, show that the differential equations for V and A can be written in a more symmetrical form with the box squared V plus DL dt equal negative 1 over uh, epsilon naught rho, box squared A minus gradient L is equal to negative mu naught j, where box squared is another operator, much like del squared uh, was a Laplacian, except here we have the uh, boxes del squared minus uh, mu naught epsilon naught uh, d squared dt squared, and L is the divergence of A with the uh, time derivative of V multiplied by mu naught epsilon naught. So um, this has a fairly similar form to what we'll see if you've ever studied it in a PDE course called, it, uh, called the D'Albertian operator. Of course, now I can't pronounce it right, but uh, yeah, this uh, very, looks very similar. Um, and we'll see more ramifications for it later. But what we know is V from Gauss's law gives us V uh, del squared V plus D by DT of the divergence of A gives us the uh, negative one over epsilon naught rho. And A we get from Max from the Ampere-Maxwell law. So we can plug uh, that in and see uh, a pretty gross setup that I'll just let you see sort of reading it off. All right, so solution. Well, this is a matter of simply plugging, the, plugging these quantities in and verifying the equivalence. So if we know that the box squared, which we see in purple on V, plus DL dt is equal to negative one over uh, epsilon naught rho, well, let's just plug in what we know. So we plug in the purple and we plug in the L, again, all color coded to keep our lives simpler. You see, once we do that, then V gets distributed, and we see that the D by DT is now acting on the divergence of A and the already time derivative of V. So we get two things canceling, and indeed what we see is that the uh, Laplacian of V plus the time derivative of the divergence of A gives us the negative 1 over epsilon naught rho. That's a straight consequence from what we saw early in the book. Uh, now, similarly, if we uh, plug in box squared A, uh, just, so, just like we did again, keep it all color coded. Now, when we distribute through, we see we actually get the same form we needed. We just have to plug the A in, and now you can see A on our note page is now equal to the same thing. So we can indeed conclude that it is uh, equal to negative mu naught J. This is all messy, and it's only going to get worse with some of these operators. But this is setting you up for something that will make life much easier. Just get used to this new box notation. It is an operator, so it is not a typical algebraic op or algebraic uh, op, you know, uh, algebraic object. There we go, algebraic object. So we we can't just utilize it and say plus or minus and cancel on both sides. No, no, it has to operate on something. Hence, why you apply it to the vector or the scalar potential.